Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Greg Stevens Designs GSD-5B. Uh, what a name, right? <laughs> but first off, uh, before I go any further, I want to let you know this was sent to me by Greg Stevens. He reached out to me because I, you know, I've been a customer of his before. I'm a fan of his work more broadly. He said, Nick, do you want to check out the GSD-5B? I said, yeah, sure, absolutely. I'd love to check it out. But I told him, as always, to talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. It might be a gem, it might be junk. He did still send it along. Nonetheless, we do have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever, and I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature or the quality of my review. Next thing, let's go on ahead and do a little bit of size measurement here. Get a sense of the the, 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 the overall proportions of this bad boy. And because we are in watches, we get to use same me, uh, units. So this is about 42 millimeters. Uh, on the overall width here, the uh, size of the face for the reading is about 30 millimeters. The overall thickness of the bad boy here is coming in right around 13 millimeters millimeters uh, as measured here. The lug to lug distance, which is the most important number for people with smaller wrists like me, is right at about 50 millimeters, five zero, and not that that was ambiguous. Uh, you're not going to look at that. Anyways, I digress. Uh, and so what we see here is this is a, a pretty reasonably big size watch, actually. Um, And so there, there you go. Um, Next thing, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on here. So Greg Stevens Design is a, uh, well, a designer, as you might imagine from having the design and the name bit. But he is a person who makes watch straps. He's made a bunch of other watches in the past. I have a review of his uh, the, the GSD-3 uh, on the channel already, and I actually own one of his other watches, uh, which I, I did through the American... Uh Watch and Clock Society's uh, Build-A-Watch program. He designed the case and face and whatnot. But anyways, so he's a designer who's done a lot of work with a lot of different people, but he's doing his own thing with these watches, right? He's having these guys made to his spec and having a bunch of parts and then kind of assembling them in a custom way. And as a result, you have a lot of customization available, right? The watch that I was sent has a bronze case, hence it being the GSD-5B. The A means steel, uh, because A obviously means steel, uh, right? Uh, but you also have the option to get a, a PVD case, that is a black uh, coated case, uh, and you have all kinds of different options for straps. The two straps he sent along are this very, very, very thick uh, leather strap here that I've got it on here, as well as a, uh, a, a pretty thick NATO, uh, a very beefy and very long NATO strap. So uh, these are, you know, the, the, some of the options, but he has, if you look at his website, a bunch of variants of this. There are versions of this with a brass bezel here. There are versions of there, there are lots and lots of different versions of this particular watch. And the way that he does this is kind of unique. He basically says, if you want to buy one, email me. Go to the website, look at some of the options out there, just email me, and then he'll work with you to figure out the version you want, right? And he can, you know, swap bezels around. He can do what he needs to do. Um, get you a strap you love, that kind of thing. It's basically, yeah, it's very, very customizable. What I said to him is, send me the configuration you're most proud of. Because honestly... I'm most interested in seeing what the maker really likes. You know, I want to see something representative rather than showing you all, the, you know, the intricacies of my weird freaking mind, right? So uh, I, I, this is kind of his his average configuration. That is the one he likes a lot, but there are lots of different options out there. And so mine came with this thick strap with this NATO, um, but there were lots of other approaches out there. So let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting watch good side. This actually does come with a polishing cloth and a little bespoke envelope, right? So it's a good old-fashioned polishing cloth here, right? And uh, it, it works, and it's actually a nice thing because it allows you to kind of clean up the brass, uh, bronze that is, a little bit, right? You can see I've gone from a little bit more tarnish down on this end to a little bit shinier on this end, right? It's a beautiful thing, right? And the, the, this is a nice thing to include with the, uh, with the brass, uh, I'm sorry, with the bronze there. So there you go. It also comes with a custom uh, tang buckle on here with GSD on there. This is a big old buckle, right? This is gigantic uh, at some level. That's kind of uh, Greg's aesthetic overall. Um, but the, the the buckle and strap are very, very uh, beautiful on the watch. I really wish I liked wearing it on this strap because it, it is very, very attractive. Another thing I'll say is that 50 millimeters lug to lug is huge, right? In most situations, that is not wearable for somebody like myself with a 6.25 inch wrist. But in this particular case, the curvature of the case, right? This little guy kind of folding down a little bit makes makes this wear a lot better than you would think, right? I'll go ahead and I'll just show you this. And it actually, yeah, it, it looks a little big on me, sure, but it's not out of line. And it can be comfortable in part because of these draping lugs, right? Compared to some of the straight, you know, like 
spread eagle lug watches out there in the world. This is a whole lot nicer. Having that little bit of curvature makes this wear a lot better than I would think. Next thing, the uh, crystal on this is quite nice. We see this is a sapphire crystal. Actually, we don't see that. Well, technically we do if we look on this side. But nonetheless, this is a sapphire crystal, right? Um, and that's a beautiful thing, but it's also domed. You can see there is a little bit of crystal sticking up above there. There's just a little bit of pleasant distortion, although the face itself is eminently readable, right? So you get a little bit at off angles, but for the most part, the, 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 the watch is perfectly readable. There are definitely some domed sapphire where the whole thing looks like you're looking in through a fishbowl and it's like, no, I don't think so. Thank you. We'll, I'll pass. But this is quite good. Um, and overall, uh, the, the, I got to say, the loom on this guy is also quite good. Well, we're talking quite good here. Uh, let me go on ahead and charge this off camera with a very powerful flashlight. What we're going to see here is that the loom on this is strong. Right, that is some strong freaking loom, and this is all night kind of loom. It, it is great, and the cream-colored loom uh, actually works. The coloration on the dial itself works pretty well here. Right now, it's going to seem a little greenish for a while because it's just been charged, but you can see here there's a loom pip, there's loomed hour hand, minute hand, second hand as well. Um, it is very, very good loom, very good, and it's very legible too, right? Because you have two different hands. The hour hand is not just a little bit shorter, but it is also wider, and it is separated with these little lines at a different place than the minute hand is, and the second hand is completely, you know, yeah. Um, so this is a very, very legible watch, and that's a beautiful thing as well. You look down at this out of the corner of your eye, you know what time it is, and that's great. And the little bit of extra um, polish on those hands gives you the chance of, even in a darker situation, getting the reflection off of something else. It's hard to show that off right now because the loom is going, you know, freaking gangbusters there. But at the same time, yeah, you can see right there a little bit of that reflection. Beautiful, beautiful thing. So, uh, you know, I like that very, very much. Next thing, this is 300 meter worth of water resist. In practice, uh, 30 atmosphere. Does this matter? No, really, not really. <laughs> um, that's the point. 300 meters and 100 meters are about the same for most people's daily life, but what it means is you don't have to worry about water. It is on a leather strap, so in that case, you have to worry about water, but if you put this on something like a cloth or a NATO or something like that, you, you, you are going to be just fine to take this in the drink. That's a beautiful thing. Next thing, the bezel on this guy is good. It is a nice, crispy feeling bezel. Right? Not a lot of bezel play to it. Unidirectional. Feels very good. Feels very satisfying, honestly. Uh, and just as unsatisfying as that's going to be to a small portion of my viewership. There you go. So, uh, this is a very, very satisfying bezel. Um, it is not particularly legible for diving. You can see here that the these parts here are not painted. It's just black in there. I guess you could paint it after the fact if you wanted to, but nonetheless, um, it is, uh, but the pip is very, very visible. And for me, that's how I use a timing bezel. Well, a dive bezel is in practice of like, oh, when do I pick up the pizza? I pick up the pizza when this go, you know, when the hand is there, right? It makes it a little bit easier, right? So, uh, but for me, the bezel is just what I need it to be, uh, and that's a beautiful thing. Movement in this guy, unfortunately, there is not an open case back, so you can't see it, although the case back is itself pretty attractive. Um, the, the movement in here is a Salita SW200-1. Um, this is a, a movement that is either automatic, meaning it'll charge itself as you wear it, or it is a hand wind movement. Uh, you can hand wind it just by pulling out the crown. It is a hacking movement which means that when I take the crown out and pull it all the way out here, you're going to see, oh yeah, that's right, secondhand stop. It's a beautiful thing, allows you to set it accurately, and it is accurate enough for daily life. I have not noticed accuracy problems with this with a bunch of wrist time on it. I've had this guy actually for a while now. It's been embarrassingly long, at least five months. Uh, sorry about that, Greg, but nonetheless, I, I, this has been perfectly fine for me on a daily basis, and it has a 38-hour power reserve. By the way, if you're seeing this, that's from the polishing process, not from the, any problem with the watch itself. Um, but nonetheless, it's got a, a very big uh, power reserve on there, which, well, okay, not very big, but a more than adequate one, right? Around what you would expect. Uh, and so that's a beautiful thing. Next thing, this guy has drilled lugs. That means is right here, and right here you have little holes, which means you can just take a spring bar tool, and when you want to remove the strap, which I think a lot of folks might, uh, you will go on ahead and 
Just press that through there, and then you're done. You're not having to use the little fork in there. You're not having to... And it just opens up your strap options a little bit more. You don't need straps with a little hole there. You're not tearing at your leather, scratching up the back of it. It's really nice and easy. Right, so that removable... Uh, the drilled lugs are a beautiful thing, as is the offset crown. We can see here the crown is not at 3 o'clock, but is over here closer to, well, about 4. Right, and that just means it's not going to push into your wrist or something like that. If you have big, beefy wrists, right, that is, uh, th that's a nice thing to have there as well. Next thing that I will show you as soon as I reattach this bad boy. Come on now. Unfortunately, it only works one direction, right? <laughs> the drilled lugs. Okay, there we go. So, uh, next thing, I really do like the polished hands on this. It's a nice detail. It wasn't Strictly speaking, I guess necessary, but oh my god, it is kind of necessary, right? Because it makes it so much more legible in more lighting conditions, and frankly, it's just nice. It looks pretty. It's kind of got a rose gold vibe to it, which I do appreciate. Um, and so that's a nice thing. I do kind of wish that the indices had some polish to them as well. They are just paint on there, but at the same time, it, it works well. Um, and it's legible enough without them. That's a nice thing. Next thing, this customization is great. In the world of, you know, dealing with the big Swiss watch companies of we released a brand new hot model. It's the same thing we've been making for 30 years, but this time the bezel is blue. Makes it really refreshing when somebody's just like, yeah, let me make you the watch you care about. Just give me a, shoot me an email, right? I like that. That's good. And I hope he's able to keep doing that in the future. It's a, it's an absolutely, see, it's starting to bother even me now. But it's an absolutely beautiful thing that you're able to do that, and it makes you more likely to get one of these that you really love. Then finally, on the good side, this is a watch that is relatively unique. And a lot of people go, oh my god, it's an absolute, not a relative. Yeah, it's relatively unique. Take it, commenter. Um, this is a watch that is not really like anything else in my collection. Being in bronze is not particularly common. The black bezel is not particularly common. The dial itself, some of those details, not particularly... This is just a nice way to, to mix it up, right? It's kind of subtle. It's a little military, but it's also quite classy, and it looks pretty damn good. This is a watch that I've really appreciated, and it feels very different than the other stuff in my collection, and that, to me, is a beautiful thing, and it's part of the reason it's gotten so much wrist time. So, to me, all that's the good. It's unique. It's got some good customization, polished hands, an offset crown, drilled lugs, a nice solid movement, a crispy bezel, 300 meters worth the water resist. It is very legible with great lube, a nice crystal, a good case shape, a custom dang buckle, and it comes with a polishing cloth. On the great side, and you're welcome to disagree with me about this, but the thing that I like most about this guy uh, is this. Right here, that's the branding. That's the branding. If you just look at it head on, you don't see anything. But if you go at a slight off angle, you see that GSD's logo is there. Very large, well, not very large, but large, prominent, readable, but just not immediately visible. And same thing down at the bottom, right? We see GSD 5B right there on the dial. It's right there waiting for you, but it's just not immediately visible. And to me, that is a really, really strong move, right? To, to, to make your branding that subtle is a confidence thing. You see so many watches with big shouty branding where it's like, oh my God, I need everybody to see. This is a superlative chronometer. Whereas this is just like, yeah, if you want to look closely, it's a GSD, but otherwise it's a freaking watch. And it makes it so legible. It makes it so easy and it makes it very nice and clean and sterile, right? To me, this is a really nice approach. And I really wish uh, more watchmakers had the confidence to do this, right? Um, this is a beautiful thing. So I really like that a lot. And to me, that's the great. You're welcome to hold the uniqueness or anything else is the great. For me, that's just a really nice detail. Um, on the bad side, to start with, there are no bracelet options for this watch. Um, that's not shocking. Unfortunately, bronze watch it's harder to do bracelets, and bronze is heavier than steel, so bracelets get very heavy. But I'm decidedly not a strap guy, and so that is a thing I miss here. Um, speaking of straps, I would much rather see a deployant clasp than a tang and buckle. Uh, what I mean by deployant clasp, do I really not have a deployant clasp handy? Uh, hold on, I'm almost... Uh, yeah, here you go. Okay, this is an example of a deployant clasp on a watch here, on a strap. Specifically, if you pinch this together, this comes out. And the watch basically stays adjusted to you, but, uh, you know, it, it pinches down as you need it to. Huh, you could wear this on this. 
Nice. Anyways, um, I digress. Uh, the uh, but this is a very very nice thing because it makes it just makes the watch better, and especially the ones that tuck the inside of the uh, the, the other side of the strap into the, the the bracelet itself. That way, you don't have the tongue of the strap like flapping around in the breeze, freaking ahi gal. No, we don't need that, right? So the point clasps just make watches better. I really want to see more people just adopt them. Generally speaking, the tang buckle design is great. It's cheap. It's easy, but mm, nah, it's worth worse. Uh, so to me, I'd love to see a deployant clasp on these guys. Um, next thing, this is uh, bronze. And as a result, patina is a fact of life, right? There is literally no way to wear a bronze watch without it patinaing a little bit, without it becoming a little less shiny, right? I'll go ahead and I will polish this up a little bit more so you can see sort of on one side the state in which this shipped to me right? The full polish version. I'll have to polish the other side this afternoon, but nonetheless, I can go ahead and do that. And you're going to see that out of the box, this comes very, very shiny, right? But then after a while, it patinas and it comes down to something like this. To me, both of these are attractive, right? That's pretty, but so is this. But you have to be sure about that. You have to be okay with that fact right? This will patina. It is inevitable. And then you can clean it up again with the included polishing cloth, right? That's a possibility. But unless you are, well, okay with that pat patination, if you will, you're gonna just, it's gonna be a factor, right? It's gonna be a constant fact that you deal with, right? And the other thing that you want to deal with is the fact that bronze does need a little extra care. On, I mean, uh, the website actually talks about getting some patina on your wrist, in practice, I've never really had that. Um, maybe I don't sweat enough or I'm not wearing this. I, I, I don't know. Um, but at some level, I played enough Elden Ring that I'm not afraid of being tarnished. Uh, uh, okay, anyways. Um, but th there are some very valid concerns there. Like if you take this guy in the ocean, you want to wash it off afterwards. According to the website, you know, you go in the ocean, wash it off, rotate the bezel to make sure anything gets dislodged, and then unscrew and rescrew the crown to avoid corrosion inside there. Those things make sense, and it's not hard to do, right? I, I mean, once the watch is dry, you unscrew and rescrew. Just throwing that out there. But uh, nonetheless, you, you do know that if you buy a bronze watch, you're going to need a little love if you want it to stay shiny rather than do patina a little bit as it uh, has here, right? Um, next thing, I the, the email me for options thing is great at one level, right? It means you're going to be able to get just the watch you want, but at another level, it's not that clear when the, the, you don't know what all the options are, right? And I'm sure, you know, Greg's the kind of, he's a nice guy. I'm sure he'd walk you through all of it. But at some level, there is benefit to some kind of a configurator or at least a list of various options options that you can do, because um, it just makes it more clear what is possible and what is impossible as you are dealing with your GSD here. So that's the thing. Next thing, this is a bit heavy, right? And it is definitely a, a big watch, right? If I go ahead and I put this guy on the, the, the this scale here, and I'll try and control the strap, we're looking here at about 3.96 ounces for just the watch and a leather strap. This is not shocking because bronze is heavier. It's fine, but it is definitely not a lightweight watch, if that's what you're looking for. And it's also just big. Frankly, that's another thing. It's relatively thick. It's relatively big. It's just you got to deal with it. Also has no date. Again, fine. Got to deal with it. I'm um, getting into more substantial issues. The price is a bit up there, right? We're looking at 800 bucks for this. Now, I got to be real with you, though. I did some comparison looking around as I was getting ready to film this. 800 bucks doesn't buy you a whole lot of bronze watch, right? You can get watches. There are a couple from uh, Hamilton, a couple from Glycine. There are some from Zelos, if you can buy it, and a couple of other micro brands out there. But honestly, there aren't that many options in a bronze watch, and a lot of them tend to kind of use bronze more like the gold, Right, this feels a little bit more subdued in its nature, and so for me at least, I, I I didn't see anything where it was like, oh yeah, that's a way better value or anything like that. Yeah, and the steel that's definitely going to be pricey. You can get a lot of watches and steel like this. It's part of the reason I wanted to check out the bronze because I figured, oh, that's going to be unique. That's going to feel a little bit different, right? Um, but you know, nonetheless, I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is the best value in watchmaking. You can get a lot of watch for 800 bucks, right? And it, particularly if you don't like this design, you don't like the bronze, then absolutely just don't do this, right? Um, um, that, that, that is a thing. And then finally on the bad side, unfortunately, the entirety of Greg Stevens' design feels like it is meant for bigger wrists, right? You know, this came with a big old NATO, and I mean long, right? This is a huge NATO strap, and mind you, you can cut down a NATO strap, like burn off the end of it there, and you can remove this part to make it a little bit less thick, making it into a Zulu strap. Of course, this isn't a NATO strap. That's a trademark. Anyways, I digress. This is, uh, but this is a very, very large NATO strap here, and it's really meant for people with giant gigantic freaking wrists. I mean, seriously, like, imagine, yeah, 
that's a lot of wrist. Anyways, so, uh, and then the, the bracelet itself, I'm sorry, the strap itself is this really big, thick leather with a really big, thick tang buckle. And it is a big, thick watch, right? Um, GSD's core constituency in, night, in uh, watch design, that is, appears to be Hellboy with the big, thick hand of doom, right? Um, everything is kind of built for that. And for those of us with smaller wrists, this strap is, well, we'll, we'll get there. So um, to me, at least that's what's bad here is that everything is sized for bigger wrists, which GSD, it feels like. The price is a bit up there. It has no date. It is big. It is heavy. The email for me, uh, email for options thing is great for customization, but a little bit rough in terms of seeing what the options are. The uh, bronze is going to need a little bit of love. Patina's effect, the life a deployant would just make this better, and there is no bracelet option. On the ugly front, and I'm kind of torn as to whether to even include this, because at some level, I asked Greg to send, a, you know, to send along a watch that he's proud of, right? I didn't specifically say, and I want super thin leather or anything like that. But at the same time, this is the strap that was sent with the watch, right? This is not a small wrist friendly strap at all, right? If I put this on my 6.25 inch wrists here, do that here and get this a freaking turnbuckle to get this thing to flex. Um, this is absolutely a big old strap, right? If I have this on, I have this much, it's hard to show this off on camera, strategic failure here, but I have a huge amount of leather just sitting, hanging out at the bottom of my wrist, and even more so where this damn strap keeper is, right? Um, it is not that flexible either. I'm right at the edge, like I have one more hole to go uh, in terms of that. This is just not ideal, right? With this guy closed up, and here, I'll take it off my wrist so I can show you vertically here, sized for my wrist, there is this much leather sitting on the bottom of your wrist, which is not great for typing, not great for daily wear. And then this thick strap ring is always digging into your wrist. And again, if you if you got a huge wrist, that probably is a non-issue, right? But for me, this was just uncomfortable. And the only thing worse than wearing the watch with this thing was wearing it without it and having the damn tongue flapping around all the time, right? So I'm sure that you could request less thick, and I'm sure Greg would be happy to oblige. And I asked him, do you have different thickness options uh, after the fact? But this shouldn't be the default. I feel like it's like when you rent, request a rental car and they hand you the keys to a fully armored Humvee. Like, yeah, that's going to be great for a couple of things, but it's probably not the right choice for most people's daily drive. We have managed to move past the overbuilt fad in the knife world, and I'm kind of looking forward to us moving past it for watch strap. Because for a while now, I've gotten a few different straps from companies out of the that are this damn thick, and every time it's like ergonomically, did you wear this? Or maybe you did, but you're Hellboy, and it's okay, right? I ended up, in order to, you know, really wear this watch in any depth, I ended up wearing it on this guy. This is a Nick Mankey Designs hook strap. Um, and this made the watch incredible. It's a whole different world, right? And I'm sure if you customize the strap, you can find something that works for you. But be careful with what you order here if you're on the smaller wrist side of things, because these big, thick straps are absolutely a choice, but they're not the right choice for a lot of people. So to me, that's the ugly, is that these thick straps are, I hope, a fad that's on the way out, but at the very least, they should probably not be your default. Um, final conclusion, though, this is a really nice watch, actually, in a lot of ways, right? With the, in, there's nice, uh, polishing cloth on there, it's got a nice buckle, uh, if, if you dig that kind of thing, a good case shape, a good crystal, solid loom and legibility, good water resist, great dive bezel, a solid movement, drilled lugs, great customization, a unique look, and incredibly subtle branding. There are downsides, though, it has no bracelet, no deployant option, at all. Uh, no patina, no bra... Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, plenty of patina. That's the <laughs> wrong way there. Um, it does have patina. You will have to do some upkeep on the bronze. It is big. It is heavy. There is no date. It has a higher price and an overall approach that does favor those with Hellboy arms, especially in the strap world. That said, there is a very weird dichotomy here. The strap drove me absolutely nuts. But the moment I got it off of there, the moment I was able to just use those nice drilled lugs and do this and put it on to something else that did actually fit my wrist, this part is amazing, right? Um, the watch itself is really excellent. And again, I want to be very clear, and I want to be fair to Greg. I probably could have done better on the strap front by talking to him specifically and say, I want your thinnest strap. But I just made the assumption, perhaps wrongly, that I wasn't going to get something quite this over the top right? Um, but I wanted to see also what he offers by default and see something a little closer to the median and give him a chance to show something he's proud of. And it makes sense that he's proud of the aesthetics of this strap. With this strap, this watch looks really damn good. I really genuinely
only wish it fit my wrist in this way and that I like tang buckle leather straps, right? Um, that, that would be great, um, aesthetically speaking. But once I put this on that strap that I can comfortably wear, this instantly became a part of my rotation as a watch, right? It is a great watch. It is functional. It is attractive. It is different. It's off the beaten path in terms of design, in terms of materials, in terms of the overall vibe of it, right? Relative to most of my collection, this stands out. And I really do love this face and this dial, right? With the little bit of polishing on the hands. is beautiful. Absolutely. It's got that beautiful logo that is just barely there, but is there in, you know, bold face when you look for it. It's got a nice bezel. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. This is a watch that I really like a lot. I wear it a lot, and I will continue to wear it a lot. I am a little bit on the fence, being completely honest with you, about gem status for something that on the box, out of the box, that is, didn't really work for me with either of these options. This strap is so long and thick that I'd have to, you know, fold it over 16 times to get in there, and with this big... Anyways, I digress. Um, But I acknowledge also that that is a matter of taste and of wrist size. And I'm sure that had I talked to him and done this custom for me, rather than just asking for what he was proud of, I, I, I would have gotten something very different. So once I... What I will say is that once I found the right strap for me, this was absolutely a gem, and it is absolutely a gem. It's a watch I have loved wearing a, a lot, right? It's got good practicality, good design, and it is way distant from the crowd. And so although I hope very much that the next one is sized for normal humans, and that, you know, th th maybe the straps thin out a little bit here in the future, uh, GSD is absolutely, and Greg Stevens is a company that will remain, or a, a dude, I suppose, a dude and the company, uh, who will remain on my radar in the future. So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Get it, GSD? Okay, that was pretty bad. Anyways, have a good one. <laughs> this nerve, you took a dive. Uh, bye now.